racing Ferraris! <laughs> I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, we're at the Little Car Company. Let's get into it. So today, we are at Bista Heritage to see the Little Car Company and have a chat to Ben, who's the CEO and founder of the company, to show us around this amazing facility, and more importantly, see some absolutely incredible scaled down recreations of some iconic classic cars. Now, it's fair to say, We've been looking forward to coming here for some time, me and Tim, and we've been very excited this morning. We were like kids at Christmas waking up to come here. So uh, without you know, any further ado, I want to introduce you to Ben. He's the CEO and founder. And just give us a bit of background. How did this start? So we were asked by uh, Bugatti to make a follow-up to the original Bugatti Baby, a 1920s like, half-scale car. Yeah. And they were celebrating their 110th anniversary. And so... We started with that, we made it 75% scale rather than half scale, and um, it's kind of exploded from there. How long ago? Four and a half years. Wow. I mean, from four and a half years to what I see in front of me now is pretty impressive. So, you know, this is amazing looking, but for me, the engineering underneath is what really, you know, gets me going. So can we have a little bit of a look on the production line and how these are made? Love to. Right, let's get into that. Now, we've come to pretty much the start of the production line. Yep. And, you know, I have no idea what car this is. So you just have to run me through, you know, what's going on here? What is this I'm looking at? It's high quality indeed, but what is it? So this is the chassis of a DB5. Um, some of our cars are super authentic. And so they're, they're kind of like base. The geometry of the Ferrari is exactly the same as the original. But with the DB5, it was more of a cruiser. So what we've done is we've upgraded it. We've made a very tough, stiff, honeycomb tub we've put brembo disc brakes on the front there yeah we've got eye back springs bilstein dampers you know it, it's much it's designed to be a sort of slidey tail happy fun car rather than a complete authentic replica of it the original. Is, it, it's just to make this abundantly clear this is not a toy the engineering on this is the same as if you know an oem built it and the quality is insane as well so this is an aston martin db DB5. Five. This is actually a okay. James Bond edition with the extra gadgets that really? we throw in from it's the got, last movie. It's got like machine guns in yep, it. Yeah, it's got a machine guns, smoke machine at the back. It's got a donut mode. The number plates are digital as well. Brilliant. Absolutely insane. Right, so what happens after this? So, next stage is we put on the body. Once we've built up the interior and the exterior, we then put the body on. Right, let's have a look at that. Right, now I'm standing next to two beautiful Aston Martin bodies here. Uh, look. As, as if they were supposed to go on to a production car, but obviously slightly miniaturised. Slightly. But one thing becomes abundantly clear when I'm looking on the underside. These are carbon fibre. Yeah, carbon fibre bodies, exact replicas of the original, obviously convertible. Uh, and it's, this one's slightly smaller than the others. It's 66% scale. Right, OK. Yeah, the mirrors, just the little dinky mirrors are really cool. But is this going to be a James Bond one as well with all the gadgets? This is a special edition one. So it's got uh, silver birch paint, as the originals would have had. Um, it's been modified so that there's a bit more space underneath so that we can get all the gadgets fitted in. It's just a tight squeeze. And the machine guns come out of the, uh, the headlights? Yeah, the, it's like the new movie, the No Time to Die movie. The headlights drop and then the miniguns come out and then rotate. And then we've got a speaker which replicates the, the noise as well. I'm blown away by just the quality of the bills, the engineering underneath and the attention to detail. It's just insane. So, Tim, your work is cut out today to get all the quality pickups and close-ups of you know these cars because i want everybody out there in youtube land to see these cars are something else now before we leave the body side of things i just want to show some of the details that ben and the amazing company here go to to recreate these cars you know things like the badges i mean the db5 badge is just that's a perfect recreation miniaturized it's the original, the original one made by the original people who made the originals no yeah really yeah. Yeah, that's insane. And, and the dash, I mean, that's the dash that goes in these cars, yeah? That's the dash, yeah. So we, all the gauges work. They're all made by Smith, who made the originals. That clock there is actually the same as the original car clock, whereas we've had to repurpose other stuff. So 
you know, the rev counters now, it's a, it's a power meter and this shows the regen. We've got a direction meter, you know, we've got the battery levels instead. Yeah. I mean, it's all the same challenges we have when we convert a car to electric. You know, you have to have range instead of fuel and stuff. But the big challenge to you is you've got to miniaturize it and fit it in a car this size. That's but it. But still keep the quality to look as if it's like an original car. Yeah, we've got a no fake rule. So we can repurpose, but we're not allowed. To, everything has to do something. So, for example, we, we nixed the, one of the headlight switches, and that's now the forward neutral reverse drive. So we, we'll have a little fun and play around with it. Brilliant. Love it. Absolutely love it. So that Aston Martin DB5 body shell was carbon fibre? Carbon fibre. Uh, but the Ferrari that we started the episode on, it's aluminium. Not just aluminium, it's like hand-formed, is it? Yeah, hand-formed, just like they did in the 1950s originally. It's, it's made for us in the UK uh, by guys with big beards and they have warm beer with twigs in it. Oh, we, um, we know lots of people like that, don't we too? <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's super thin. And you can see it takes 300 hours for body to make it. it, it this is just art as yeah. far as i'm concerned this is just on a, a, another level again as far as the detail that you go to to recreate these things doing a hand formed aluminium body for the ferraris was that a requirement the ferrari said that you had to do that or is that just you guys saying this is what we're going to do no we discussed the options with them and we looked at both carbon fiber to reference the modern cars and then we thought actually it's going to be more authentic it takes a lot more time and it's harder work. But, yeah, <laughs> Just a we, bit. That's an understatement there, yeah. Ben. We sort of decided that, yeah, the, the, the aluminium would be nicer. And actually, the first car we made, the client asked for it just to be polished, just aluminium, and it was stunning. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, Ben, this is kind of the end of the process, if you like. I mean, I can That's see right. lots of finished cars here and uh, some, you know, Boxes, I'm assuming they go in. I mean, but there's a lot of cars here. How, how many have you actually built so far? About 380 to date. We've wow. exported 95% of them, and about 80% of the value of the cars is from the UK that's as well, which is quite nice. So that, that's, that's a success story. British SME exporting that much as well. And, and it's, they're all you know, primarily sourced and built in the UK. It's yeah. fantastic. All designed here, all developed here. We, we sort of design, we build them here, it's just, and then export 95% of them. I'm in awe, Ben. But the, uh, these cases is what the cars end up in then when they get exported. Yeah, so these flight cases, we design them so that people can move their cars around. So they, they open like a clamshell and there's some ramps inside. You drive the cars on, strap them down to the wheel cups, put your spare batteries underneath, no they way. close up and then you can forklift them and fly them and take them wherever you so want. So you've really. even had to engineer the, the boxes that they go out in. Yeah, yeah. We, it's a bit of fun as well. We'd like to see something a bit different as well. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Now, I haven't even mentioned the most exciting thing for me, this whole company, and that's the fact that these are electric, guys. Um, so I'm seeing a motor down there, controller, batteries. I mean, what sort of... Tell us a little bit about the system. What, what's the voltage of the system? So we run everything at 48 volts yep. so that it can be fixed by anybody. It's in the low voltage rules. Yep. Um, it makes it safer and simpler. We're not trying to get that much power out of it. So it's more about the fun of the driving for us rather than outright performance. So you've got a direct drive motor at the back there, yep. uh, a controller down there. I see batteries up the front. Now, what sort of size battery pack have you got in this? So two kilowatt hours per pack, and we've got three of them, and they're quick swappable, so you can flip them out in 60 seconds and then fill in again and off you go. And we've had that's 110 kilometers out of this car that's going around the track. That's so good. So that's six, six kilowatt hour battery pack total. Total, yeah. And you just disconnect that and pull them out and then you that's can it. take them into the house or whatever just to charge them up. Put some fresh ones in, off you go. Oh, put some fresh ones in, yeah. Brilliant for track days. <laughs> just come into the pits, quick swap, Formula One like pit stop and away you go. So yeah. They're electric. Are we going to be able to drive one of these? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tim, you're too big. You can't fit in, mate. I'll have to do it. Right, let's go. Can we go and have a look at one outside where we yeah. can see a finished one? Let's go and have a look. Brilliant. Uh, I'm getting progressively more excited as this goes on because this is an Aston Martin um, James Bond version, yeah? This is the No Time to Die special edition. So this has the gadgets on? Yeah. You've got to show me the gadgets. Okay, have a look at the front to start with. Go on then, what's going to happen? So we've got the digital number plates. These are all from the latest movie. Oh yeah, I can see it. Oh yeah. So the latest movie car had digital number plates. And they're the actual number plates from the movie? Yeah, actual number plates from the movie. Brilliant. We worked with the guys who developed the stunt cars to actually make this. So it's the same software inside that makes it happen as it was on the stunt cars. That's amazing. And then you've got the mini guns. Say what? No way! 
Oh, they're making noise! <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, uh, can you do this on one of my cars? <laughs> we can try. I we want have... this on my Beetle. I want that on my Beetle. And then, uh, obviously, for a getaway, you need a smoke machine. So right. we have a smoke machine cooked in at the back. <laughs> oh, no! An electric battery fire! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need this at a disco. That's insane. Oh. And there's also a skid mode, but harder to demonstrate that as well. Locks up, it's got a line lock on the front wheels, allows you to spin the rear wheels and hold the brakes on the front. I've got that on a Beetle, but 600 horsepower of Tesla power helps to do that as well. We haven't quite got that. <laughs> oh, I so want those guns on the front of my Beetle. That is, it's the detail on what you build here, Ben, is on another level. You know, Irrespective of the fact these are small recreations of these cars, if these were full-size cars, the you know, engineering is on a level level. But then you're up against the other challenges of the fact it's so small, like the wheels. Can we just get it a quick like, close-up of the wheels, Tim? You know, I didn't even consider this, but you know, that's a small wheel that you've got to essentially recreate, but that size. Yeah. How on earth do you do that? It's... it's it's packages a nightmare on this. We never designed the cars to fit all the gadgets. We had to retrofit and redesign everything else. And the complexity is you've got the same number of wheels as a full-size car, same number of brakes. You just have to compact it down. And still, we make all our cars to sort of the standards that we pass to road legal tests. So it's tricky, but brilliant That's an understatement. The challenges you've got are, are, are amazing, but the build qualities are on another level, people. Right, so if that Aston Martin didn't blow your mind, Ben's brought us out of the courtyard and he's brought a couple other cars out here to show us. Now, I do know that this is a Bugatti, but that's about all I know. So tell us a little bit more about this one. So this is a, an exact 75% scale replica, or exact as we could get, given it's electric, of a Bugatti Type 35, which is the most successful racing car of all time. And it's our Bugatti Baby 2. So did you get that, Tim? Our Porsche 914 rally car wasn't the most successful like, race car of all time. Hard to believe. I find that hard to There's believe. There's as much room in that as there is in the rally car. Yeah, that's, that's very true. So I only knew it was a Bugatti because it had the badge on the front. So the badge is solid silver on a Bugatti Chiron. It's the only thing they don't lightweight. It's made of solid silver, so we did exactly the same. So that's a 75% scale Bugatti badge. Now, I'm seeing the manufacturer's badges on all the cars mm -hmm. that we've seen so far. How do you get away with that? Is that a controversial question? No, we developed it with them. So this is an official Bugatti. We make it, but it's an official Bugatti. You can go to the Bugatti website and buy one. No way. Yeah, fully classed Bugatti. So the Ferrari badge is a fully licensed Ferrari badge. They All allow the you to build the cars. All the manufacturers have sanctioned Fully these sanctioned, and they consider it one of their models. That is... Just made by us. That is awesome. I mean, that is amazing. That You know, the manufacturers have essentially you know, rubber stamped these to be built with their blessing. I mean, that tells you a lot about the quality of these cars, that they are okay for you to create these cars. Yeah, we have to exceed the quality standards that they have internally to get them passed off. They, they help, we develop them in partnership with them. Ferrari lets us into the museum to, to do all the, get all the original drawings that we wow. then scanned and recreated. You know, for example, in the Bugatti, we get to make the, use the Bugatti Chiron speed key, which, yeah unlocks the speed limiter and doubles the power. Um, just like, like Buzz that. and I want a key like that, Tim. A key that doubles the power. Because anybody that knows me, you know, knows, you know, I like slow cars, you know, they're eco-friendly. I'm, I'm all about the power, Ben. Now, this is amazing, but there's one car behind me I really, you know, I want to talk about. Can we have a look at that one? Yeah. Because that's, that is eye candy in the extreme. So this is the car I walked past before that I fell in love with. And I'm not a Ferrari fan, but I like this car. So what, what's this one, Ben? So this is our Ferrari 250 Testarossa, but this has got the, the Pacogara in, which is the race pack. So you get extra little bits on normal cars. So you have like a roll cage. It's got a bit more performance, quicker steering rack. Uh, we've got a brake bias adjuster, uh, drill discs at the front. You've got the racing lights. You've got a uh, you know, little cover for the passenger seat. So it's got a few extra bits that yeah. you're going to have in the standard car. And, and does the 250 mean anything? Is that like a number from a race car of old? Or? No, just purely a reference to 250 Testarossa. Gotcha. Um, and the dashboard itself, I mean, that's just art, quite frankly. It, we, we replicated as close as we could, but we did add in a little feature with the Manatino. 
So the, the what? The Manatino, little switch in Italian. It's, they have in all the steering wheels, the modern Ferraris, to choose your drive mode, like wet, right. race. So we had a bit of fun. We, rest, we did a kind of retro version of it, and it also doubles up. You can select which mode you want to drive oh, in. Yeah, comfort, sport, re- and it's the key. It's the key as well. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, that is a nice touch. I like that. So we, try and, we try and have a bit of fun with it. So we, we take some of the modern stuff, like the Manatee or the Speed Key from the Chiron, but also we're as authentic as possible. So the paint on this car is from Ferrari, the leathers from Ferrari. Wow. They give us the badges, the chassis plaque. The, the chassis plaque as well you get yeah, from them. Yeah. The, the steering wheel is by Nardi, who made the original back in the 1950s. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, the, the wheels are Pirelli, uh, the tyres are Pirelli because that's the Ferrari brand. We just, we try and get it as close as possible. Uh, it's just absolutely stunning. I'm blown away by the engineering underneath. And I can see why, as I said before, Ferrari and others sanction you building these recreations of their cars. I mean, it, it's a testament to the build quality that they have rubber stamped these cars. It's, it's insane. Uh, this is um, um, this is used, yeah? Because uh, um, is this a demonstrator? Yeah, this is a demonstrator. Do you want to give it a go? He said the right words, Tim. <laughs> he hasn't seen you drive, has he? Too late, I'm getting in. Can I, can I just get in? Yeah, jump in. Stand on the seat. It's a demonstrator car. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You hear that first. All right, go on then, Ben. I'll follow you. No racing. <laughs> oh, I love this. God, they're no slouch, are they? What's the top speed on them, Ben? <laughs> 50 miles an hour? Yeah. They're not slow, are they? No, no, no. My God, I mean, I should be uh, used to electric power by now, but that's nippy for, for uh, you know, a small car like this. But the brakes are really good. Uh, honestly, I think the brakes on this are better than the modern Testarossa I've been driving around in. This is fantastic, right? Absolutely brilliant. Oh, We're going to the runway, Tim. Ben, it's been amazing here today. I am in complete awe of the cars that you built here at the Little Car Company, from the, the quality levels, the, the attention to detail. I mean, we're going to have to up our game at ECC now. You realise that, don't you? No, thank you. Thank you for coming along and having a look and having a bit of a play with the cars. Oh, uh, it's been a pleasure. And if you need a test driver, I'm there for you, right? Three oh. hours journey is nothing. Anytime. You need me, I, I'll be here. Anytime. All right. Uh, now, I hope you guys out there have enjoyed watching this episode as much as I've enjoyed making it. And uh, on that note, I'll see you on the next one.